Balsa just flies better. Stick around. We're going to do the unboxing of this T6A Texan 2 from Gator RC. I thought with the explosion of foamies, Balsa ARFs were dead and gone. Guys, they are alive and well, and they are over at Gator RC. So if you want to check them out, go to www.gator-rc.com and check out the huge selection of Balsa ARFs that they have through the Seagull Models line, Top RC Model, Turbine Jets. They carry a full line of uh, engines, electronics, servos, turbines, um, hardware, batteries, you name it, family run business, one stop hobby shop, guys, they have it all. This was the undiscovered diamond for me. I finally found some place that carries a huge selection of Balsa ARFs that you can go through. So if you're a Warburg fan, biplane fan, you want bigger stuff, oh my God, they got some beautiful Corsairs there. Absolute dream plane. Maybe one day we'll actually pick one of those up. But I want to share with you guys what I got right now from Gator RC. And this is a Balsa ARF made by Seagull Models. This is a T6A Texan 2. 63 inch wingspan on this thing. It comes in two different versions. It comes in the Marauder version and the US Air Force version. Very cool. It can go either electric or nitro or gas if you wish. This thing is designed for a 75 through a 90 um, two stroke and because this was a turboprop plane it was a military trainer plane based off the pc9 pl uh, platypus platform used as a trainer for our military since the early 2000s i thought you know i got something cool i'm going to do with this so i opted to make mine electric i hope you guys follow me through the unboxing and then through the build and then eventually the maiden as i'll show you how to build this model along the way show you the quality of the product this is a genuine covered or a cover plane. So hopefully build time on this is um, a little longer, a little um, more, you know, kind of touchy feely than just throw a battery in it and get it out to the field. You can put your own personal touch on this stuff, but super excited that I found Gator RC. I hope you guys check them out. If you do, make sure you tell them that Brennan from Just Playing Crazy sent you. Um, they were absolutely phenomenal people to deal with, and that's why I really recommend them. So I hope you guys uh, are, are excited to get into this. I am, but again, so many Warbirds to choose from. It was a tough one, but this one I'm kind of excited to dig into. So it's time to get into that unboxing. Here it is, guys. It is time. Let's crack this box on the T6A Texan 2 from Gator RC and Seagull Models. So the box arrived initially completely unscathed. Again, we love our FedEx guy. Make sure you, uh, you treat them nice. They, they actually have their own little... Uh, preferences when it comes to how they take care of their boxes for sure but we'll get the lid off of this thing here and uh, my initial thought is pretty good because everything I see is well organized in the box and it is wrapped for protection which is nice because sometimes you buy ARFs and you just see them thrown in the box and there's ARFs out there that are three times the price of this that I literally see nothing on and they're just thrown in the box so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this up here. And we have some stuff to throw on here so we don't imprint any of the covering on this. Now this was, as I said, covered in Aura Cover. So the nice part is, is that uh, it should be a very high quality. But if you leave it lay and press on it on a workbench or anything else, any dirt or any little objects will leave indentations in the covering and give you an undesirable look somewhere. So again, 63 inch wing panel on this thing, total wing. It looks like from very first impression, it's going to be a three piece wing. Now this does have um, optional belly flaps on this or split flaps, if you will. You can, you can see them right there at the bottom. They have some tape on there. Um, looks like they already applied decals. They have the doors cut for you uh, for aileron servos and as well of flap servos. And it looks like they've already marked, which is really nice, our hinge points. So when you look at like that little dot in the covering right there um, or here, you can start to see some of the slats you're going to need to put 
hardware into. But the outside has a nice invasion stripe look to it. Um, these are just, it feels like die cut vinyl decals over the top. So looks like a little wing panel, but by the time we get all three pieces together, that will be rather large. So this will be my first ever plane from Seagull or Gator RC. This was my first experience with them. And I found them by initially ordering some hardware that I couldn't find anywhere else, and they had it, which was super cool. So it looks like we have a little port here in the front for some little tidbits to glue in later. Again, vinyl cut decals, nice finish to this. Looks like the tape on that one didn't hold that one in place, but that's all right. They got the flaps and stuff in there. It looks like we might have a a little wrinkle in the loose covering. That's okay. One of the things that I like to do is make sure that before we take it out for the first time is that we iron all that stuff. If you're going gas or nitro, anything that gets underneath those spots will eventually lift it. So it's important to seal off all of the, the different layers of covering to make sure you don't get any oil from nitro engines or anything underneath them. And this will be our center section and it's nice they actually what i'm feeling here guys is that they take all of these pieces of plastic and they actually like either staple them i guess it is to the inside of the box so they're not just flying around they're somewhat contained which is nice because i'm sure they don't want phone calls either from customer service going oh i just got this model from you guys and this is dented or scratched or dinged or whatever I actually bought that Hangar 9X Cub, and there was quite a few parts smashed in that. And as you guys know, that that model is about a thousand bucks. So um, this one was was about mid, I believe it was three hundred dollars. So there's our center section, and then it looks like we're going to wind up gluing and joining those pieces together there. And then our other one right there. So that's what our wing is going to look like. If you guys can see that. So that'll be pretty cool. We have our instruction packet. Usually I just like to take a, a glance through this. The pictures are nice. They're a nice size. Easy to see. So we'll follow along with this in the build. I already like the control horns, adjustable screws on those. So that's kind of neat. We are going to put retracts in this. Um, we are going with E-Flight retracts and... And then here you get another Seagull Models brochure. So everything that's available through the Seagull line through Gator. So as soon as we uh, get to the build portion, I'll cover that with you guys and we'll see how it turns out. Again, the inside was stapled. To protect it. This is my Rutta. So far, nothing's uh, damaged, which is which is really cool. That way, you're not wasting time. Now, these look like they are nylon um, or the fabric, I should say, hinges. The fiberglass, what we term as fiberglass hinges. These are the slotted type in there, so it gives it a little bit more flexibility. Now, you could keep those in there, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with those. I've used those my whole life, and they've worked really well. Um, if you wanted to, though, you could upgrade that to a nylon from the fiberglass hinges. And they're a little bit more durable, but I've never had those break if you do them right. But again, the rudder looks good. Um... From what the description said, those are actual livery numbers. I don't know if that matters to me, but some people with a scale model or a semi-scale model, livery numbers matter.
And this is one of the things that you could really tell, um, you know, about somebody's kind of experience covering planes. I've never been great at it. I've done quite a few different colors on the top and the bottom. But when you start getting around doing compound curves, you know, how does that covering turn out? And you can see there's a small bubble or wrinkle in there, but that's pretty good. That's not bad. This is not a, a thousand dollar airplane. So, um, you know, that that's pretty well done in there. It's got a little bubble to it, but again, fiberglass hinges on the inside. So we have what, five hinges in there. And now comes down to the dun, dun, dun. This is always the best part is when you get to the fuselage. So this is separated by some more cardboard. And we have a aluminum wing tube here. Nice, they beveled the edges on this thing, so a good quality, it's not jamming and cutting balsa. There's nothing worse than shoving that thing in and breaking some balsa. We got a, uh, a nice assortment here of push rods. There's some different bends and stuff in there. Oh, look at that. So there's some good quality clevises on there, metal clevises, so much better than using plastic ones. And they come with the keepers on there to actually put the, the little fuel tubing, if you will, on there. They, not Tigon, but the other stuff. Brain laps at the moment. So that's cool. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff in here, guys. Let me see if I can get us a better angle. All right. So we're going to move some of this stuff around. Pieces and parts, parts and pieces. Let's get out this big mamma jamma fuselage. Check this thing out. This is like the bread and butter right here, guys, of the whole operation. I want to be careful we don't get any of that tape sticking to the covering. And this is... This is one of the things that just makes planes fly better. Oh, look at that. There it is. So I was curious how they were going to pull off the hatch compartment for electric to make it easy. And look at that. Um, no, maybe not. Nope, that's going to be for our retract. My curiosity is going to be where are we going to put the batteries in this thing to make this electric thing? Oh, there we go. It's on the other side. To make this accessible to get batteries in and out of so it looks like the fuel tank slash hatch area there is going to be where we're going to access batteries from now my my vision is to run this thing on a uh, 6s now it feels like there's a screw or something in there holding that thing in have to look at the directions to see how to get that hatch off but that's where it looks like we're going to go with our batteries right there the retract assembly is going to sit in here so that option was out but you got plenty of room on the inside you already got some uh, nice blind nuts installed in the back of there for your wing to bolt into nice hard lock so that's not going to go anywhere ball supply interior to mount all your servos in nice locations there and here's one of the cool things as well is that if you're going to run an external switch, they already have the slots cut for if you're going to use the bigger switch or just the small on and off switch for an electric setup. Or if you're going to do a recharge port and switch there on the side. But uh, balsa sheeted fuselage, it's solid all the way back through there. And it's not very heavy. It weighs very little. And then you're going to have, it looks like a rear elevator servo right there if i had to guess 
Um, this is a one piece elevator. If you guys, if I didn't show you that in the very beginning. So this does not have duals. So this is just one elevator servo for the whole thing. But that thing is impressive. It looks nice. They did a nice job with the covering. Sides of that look good. And this is our canopy. And here's a word of advice when it comes down to canopies. They scratch pretty easy. Even from floating around in cardboard. So once you have this thing out and you check it out, since you're not going to need it right away, do yourself a favor and protect it before you put it back. Because if I just lay this thing in the cardboard from it bouncing around, it'll leave little scuff marks in it. And as soon as the sun hits it, the canopy is not going to look so nice. So pretty nice painted canopy, kind of typical there. But we're going to keep that thing wrapped set it off to the side see what other tidbits we have in here looks like we got some instrument panels a little headrest for the pilots and some instrumentation that's nice I guess if you wanted to you maybe cut some slots in there put an LED in the inside of there if you wanted that to illuminate a little bit just to add a little bit more uh, more detail. So that one's gonna go there, I guess, and then that one. And then we have some other little uh, pieces for around the plane. Some more plastic bits, if you will. So we're gonna save that one to put our canopy back in there. That one we don't need. Nothing else there. Looks like we have some uh, Wing tips or something, some skids. Yeah, these are wing tips. Boy, wouldn't that be nice to do right now is to put some LED lights in there. See, that's a nice thing. You got you got such a platform here to customize if you guys wanted to. This thing would be amazing. Look at that, how you have access right into there, into those wing tip lights. And look, if you guys can see down through there let me whack the camera here so look at that platform that you have to work with that's all hollow so you can fish whatever wires you want and now here at the other side it's nothing just to poke a hole in there and then to run them lights so it would be silly goose man right now not to run some lights in there all right lights it is and that's the thing, you know, when you buy an ARF, how, how can, how can you customize it? How can you, oh, look at that. How can you customize it to make it different than what everyone else has? Look at that. Oh, that's awesome. Those are beefy. Those are mechanical servo operated retracts. So you hook up a servo to it and you just pull that up and back. Now the benefit to these over the electronic ones is there's no worm gear to strip out. Uh, the downfall is, is you add weight with servos operating these things. But man, these are beefy. I can't believe it came with these. I, it's not what I expected. I expected wire pigtails. Look at that. Yeah, those are stout. You bend those things, man. You're not good at landing. And some days I don't have good landing, so maybe it's perfect for me. That is not what I expected there, guys, at all. Accessory parts for elect electric conversion. I'm probably going to need these. Look at that. Little firewall for your motor. Give you some nice blind nuts, some hardware in there. Again, we're going to throw out a recommendation. I started using high saw epoxy from uh, a recommendation of my buddy from Ron, uh, Ronnie London. And I tell you what, guys, the high saw is where it's at. When you want epoxy that, that works really well and is clean, high saw is definitely where it's at. It's pricey, but it's well worth it. 
All right, so these things, I don't know where they get used yet, but if I had to guess, when you adhere the motor box, you're gonna use these on the side to sturdy that up all the way around and secure it. So you always wanna use your triangle stock anytime you're securing a firewall, for sure, for sure. No, what do, you, what do we got here? Oh, I didn't know this either. Oh, there's all kinds of cool stuff in here. See, now, not everybody likes an unboxing video, but I think this is cool because if you're like, oh, I'm going to buy it, but I wonder what else I need. Well, you can have some other guy go through it like me, and we'll rip everything out, and we'll tell you. That way you don't have to buy too much or stuff you don't need. So set that stuff up in there. What do we got here? Got yourself a, a spinner. Now, let me see what size this is. This is a uh, two and three quarters. Yeah, this is a two and three quarter spinner, plastic spinner. Um, I really think this model, it would be a really, really nice touch if this thing was done in aluminum, but I really think I want to do a three blade on this. I don't think I want to do the two blade. And uh, looks like we got some screws there. Nice tires. You got some nice scale coloring to those things, if you will, but super light. We have more uh, little pieces and tidbits and scale details in there. Little tips and covers. You have this thing, which we're not going to need. That's a set of motor mounts that come in there. You got a bag of hardware of collars and bolts and screws and push rod attachment, quick links. We got covering for something. So I guess we have to cover up, do some trim work, see where that's needed. Got Velcro. Got some uh, hardened ply washers. Got some more white covering. Which, this stuff's nice if you have to do little patchwork, if that's... I don't know if it has a purpose or if this is just um, extras in case you poke holes. But that's really cool. And then you have a setup for a, a three-line tank already in there with a stopper and a fuel clunk. We're not going to need that either because we're going with the electric version. And what's the benefit to electric? I do a lot of flying in events. And uh, usually they have limitations on when you can fly in the morning noisy stuff and here it looks like our horns some plastic horns with screws that go through that will attach uh, to the other side and secure that it's kind of typical but anyway so uh, electric stuff you can fly early in the morning and with a nice balsa model you get a good flying aircraft first thing in the morning while everyone else is either still sleeping or if they were camping over or whatever but you can get that great early morning dust or uh, dawn morning flying in before most people are even at the field and you're not waking anybody up or bothering anybody. Oh, look, you got some pilots. And then there's no mess. When you're done, maybe you got bug guts on it. So you got some pilots here. Now these have a little bit of a weight to them, like physical weight. Um, but they're decent looking pilots. They're all right. But they are, they are a little bit of weight to them. So if you're a guy that's weight conscientious, you might want to either leave those out or whatever. But man, for looks, those look pretty good in there. I'll face that one around. Maybe you guys could see that. And then here is our painted fiberglass cowling. That looks really nice. That has a nice finish to it. Look at how they blacken the inside of that already. Yeah. There's certain models that you just, I don't know. Um, you know, you want to weather the snot out of, and then there's other ones that you leave nice and shiny. And I always like, oh, I'm going to weather the snot out of this thing. And then you get a nice painted cow like this. And you're like, no, nah, I don't want to weather it. But nothing was damaged, chipped. No dings or cracks if, you know, it gets compressed. So, um... Let's take some of our tidbits out here. A 
and we'll see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks good. That's awesome. Oh, I can't wait. This is going to be a cool project, guys. This is going to be one cool project. So there it is. There's our fuse. And then again, all of our, uh, our goodies that came with the plane. That's our canopy. And then you see we got our wings and stuff. So a bunch of different recommendations there for you guys. But um, man, I'm impressed that it came with these things as part of the kit. And again, the kits are so reasonably priced, guys. It's crazy. You can really get into these uh, for not much more than the kit, and they're a joy to build. So there you have it. Um, there is our Texan T6A, uh, Texan 2 from Seagull Models. Pick yours up today at Gator RC. I really hope you guys check them out. They have such a cool inventory of balsa arps there. Um, as I said, full stop, full one-stop hobby shop. Whatever you think of, man, they have it. But really cool model i hope you guys follow along on the build again it's just it's brendan it's just playing crazy i know you guys are just playing crazy as well um follow along on this adventure make sure that you hit that subscribe button and uh select the bell notification and select all so that way you get uh, made aware of all of my content when it comes out like share subscribe don't forget the merch down in the merchandise store uh it's always appreciated it helps to support the channel but there you have it there's the unboxing can't wait to get into the build series of this plane. I hope you join me. Again, Brendan, peace out. Happy flights.